what's going on guys welcome back to the channel it's a beautiful day in washington state today and we got a little bit more eg civic content just a little bit of wrenching in the garage today this time not on my car my friend matt has dropped off his b16a swapped 95 dx coupe in paradise blue for a couple front end service parts to be installed so let's go over the car and talk a little bit about what he has done to the car so once again, this is Matt's 95 DX Coupe. It is paradise blue on some Rota slips, of course. Classic Honda stuff. B16 A swap, I think out of an EF. PCI wing. Really not sure what coilovers it's on. Del Sol seat. Momo Monte Carlo, just like mine. This is in a lot better shape. 240K on the chassis. It's a Honda, so who knows what's going on with the motor. That's just how it is, but car's in pretty decent shape. A little bit of scratches and dents here, but he picked the car up for 800 bucks from his brother-in-law pretty recently, and it's been giving him some issues. Makes a lot of noise when turning. I'll show you guys that in a second, but let's get the hood popped on this thing and take a look at the engine. Under the hood, we have a JDM B16A. This is the 1990 spec engine. I think it came out of a CRX in Japan. Stock intake manifold, just some generic headers, stock radiator, big ol' whale dick intake from Max Speeding Rods, I'm pretty sure. Looks like that's what coilovers it's on as well. Not 100% sure. This is gonna be my first time working on this car. Honestly, my first time even seeing this car. But, solid little rig. It's gonna be his daily driver for a little bit once he gets his RSX into track mode. He tracks an RSX, the white one, I'll put a picture up on the screen pretty cool car but this is a cheap little project that I'm helping him out on today so the reason that Matt brought me the car today is because the front end components are pretty worn out um, it's on a nine and a half inch rotor just full DX suspension but makes a pretty terrible noise when turning he's sure that it's the lower ball joint so we're gonna be doing that as well as a skunk 2 lower control arm and a k-tune rear compliant bushing let me show you guys the noise that it makes when he turns the car it's pretty scary and he said there's about half an inch of play in the ball joint and I'll definitely show you guys that as well so we're taking a look at the passenger side front wheel um, I'm gonna hop in the car and just move the steering wheel back and forth and you'll hear the noise it's pretty bad definitely something to be concerned about so I'm glad that he brought this thing to me before something happened That noise is pretty sketchy, so let's get this thing inside the garage and take the wheels off and see what we find. So I got the car up in the air, I have a jack under the control arm to unload the ball joint, and I'm just gonna put a pry bar in between the ball joint and the control arm. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to film, but we're looking for play up and down when you pry on the knuckle. So try and get the camera set up in a way that you can actually see what's going on, and I can still work on the car. Put this right here. Holy shit. Ooh. Yeah, she's pretty done. That's a ton of play. So we definitely need to get that replaced. That's getting getting dangerous. So I'm gonna get the knuckles off both sides of the car. It's the lower ball joint, upper ball joint, tie rod, and then just some brake line business, axle nut, all that stuff and take these guys to work and press some new ball joints in. So I got the passenger side knuckle all pulled off and ready to go to my shop to get the ball joint replaced since I don't have a ball joint press here. I didn't film it just because it's a little bit dark over in this side of the garage, kind of hard to film. So we're gonna come over to the driver's side of the car and I will show you step by step on how to get the knuckle out. These are all the tools you're gonna need. Maybe a little bit different configuration depending on how you do it. I like to leave the fork for the shock in the car and just take the ball joint off for the top and then take the ball joint off for the bottom and kind of snake the axle out. It saves me a little bit of time, maybe, maybe not, but you're gonna need big hammer, 3 8 ratchet, long one for the brake caliper bolts, short one for just miscellaneous stuff, 19 mil, 17 mil, 14 mil, 12 mil, um, 32 for the axle nut, a punch to unstake it, impact gun if you have one, 
a little screwdriver gun so you can get the rotor screws out maybe you might need an impact screwdriver for that ball joint separator needle nose pliers for the cotter pins 10 12 17 wrench and a caliper hanging hook a lot of this stuff's optional I just have quite a few tools that I prefer to use when I work on these Hondas. Makes it a little bit easier for me. I've been doing this for a while. So let's get started on how we're gonna take this guy apart. Sitting here looking straight on at the knuckle. I'm just gonna unscrew the lug nuts, get these guys out of the way. And the first step that I usually do is unstake this little crimped in piece of the axle nut. I'm gonna reuse these axle nut. You're technically not supposed to, but I've gotten away with it plenty of times as long as you correctly torque them. The torque value is not very high. This is a really big threaded piece on the axle, so it's totally fine. So I just grab my little pin punch, stick it in there, bonk, 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 and then I blast this thing off with the impact. Now that I got the axle nut off, I'm just gonna take the caliper, turn it all the way to the left. Take these two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the brake line off. These two 10 millimeter bolts do the same thing. And then I'm gonna reach behind there's two bolts, 17 millimeter, uh, that hold the um, caliper to the knuckle. Gonna get those guys off. This is a DX caliper. You can tell because it doesn't have a bolt up here, but it does have one down here. When I put this thing back together, I'm gonna take this all apart just so I have a little bit easier time putting it together. I'll show you guys that probably tomorrow night when I go put this thing back together. Let's get these bolts off, get the caliper hung up to the spring on the coilover because we're not removing that just to keep from putting stress on the brake line from the weight of the caliper. If you have stainless steel lines, you can kind of get away with just letting them hang. I usually don't still, just because it's not a great idea. But let's get this apart. So I just unbolted the caliper, all the line bolts, got this thing hung up with this brake caliper hanging hook to the spring of the coilover. Once again, I'm not gonna be removing the coilover or anything attached to it from the car. Next, normally there's two screws that go right here. They're a bitch to remove. Thankfully, this one doesn't have any, probably because they snapped off inside. No, they're still not, they're not there, but they're not necessary. The lug nut will hold the, the rotor on. It just makes it a little bit easier to get the caliper onto the knuckle. So just pulled the rotor off, turn the steering wheel all the way to the right, and we're gonna remove the tie rod. So just pull this cotter pin out that's right here. 17 millimeter nut right there. Give it a couple bonks and it'll pop right out. Sometimes they get pretty stuck. That's what this ball joint separator can be used for. Usually don't need to use it on the tie rods. You can just whack the knuckle with the hammer and it'll free everything up. So let's get that taken off. Now that the tie rod's off, just hang it down right there. We're gonna go after the upper ball joint. Once again, 17 millimeter. I usually use a ratcheting wrench just to take this guy off. Turn it all the way this way so it can't just pivot the knuckle on you. Same thing, cotter pin and then 17 millimeter, and then I usually hit the knuckle right here and the ball joint will pop up. So we'll get that off and then we're gonna go after the lower ball joint under here. And this is usually what I use the ball joint separator for just cause you can't really get a good swing with the hammer in. So that's what I brought the ball joint separator out for. So the upper ball joint has been disconnected. I kind of let the knuckle flop over here this way. I'm gonna pull the cotter pin out blast the 17 mil nut down. I'm not gonna remove it fully just so I have an area for the ball joint separator to clamp to. Just I don't wanna wreck the threads on this. Even though we are replacing it, you never know if you might need to put it back together. I'm gonna pull that off. And then the last step is you kinda have to wiggle this whole thing out from the axle, being careful that you don't separate the inner CV boot just because it doesn't actually retain anything like the front one does. This one has a snap ring in there that'll keep the joint from overextending. Well, this one does not because the hub holds it into the transmission or the half shaft. So I just took the nut all the way off of the lower ball joint. This castle nut is gonna make it basically impossible to put the ball joint separator on without damaging the ends of this. I have all new hardware, new ball joint, so I'm not super concerned. I'm gonna grab the ball joint separator. It goes in here, just like that. You can see this little lever pushes on the bottom of the ball joint and then this part will push the it'll push it through the knuckle it jumps off pretty hard so I'm gonna kind of hang on to it and then I'll probably get scared and let go but I usually take 19 mil socket shove it on the impact gun and just go to town and there it is 
you separated, unscrew the ball joint separator, pull it out of there, and you can see that the knuckle is now free. Now you kind of have to fight it, pushing the axle through. Just kind of tap it with the end of the hammer. I usually don't strike the end of the axle with metal unless it's brass, just to not damage the end of the axle if we are reusing this. So let's wrestle this guy out of here. And there it is, got the knuckle out. First, taking a look at what Matt bought to replace the ball joints. These are the standard length hard race ball joints. Supposedly they're a little bit stronger than factory. Me personally, I run factory replacement stuff just like from a parts store on my car. I have to replace them once a season just because the brakes get so hot. Um, these things look pretty damn solid though. Once again, OEM length. The boot looks very high quality. Um, Non-greasable, which is a good thing honestly because the grease fitting gets in the way of the axle half the time. Comes with a snap ring to hold it in, cotter pins, the usual stuff, and a little hard race plaque. Had a sticker too, but I gave that to Matt, it's in his car. So I'm gonna bring these to work with me and install them in the knuckle. But next step is to remove the lower front control arms because we were gonna be replacing those along with the compliance bushings. Next up is removing the lower control arms. I already removed the passenger side. I'm just gonna be doing the driver's side on camera. Once again, it's dark over on that side of the garage. Kind of sucks to film. So tools you're gonna need, ratchet, 17 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter wobble socket, maybe. 17 millimeter long socket, 19 millimeter impact gun, very helpful. So there's really not a whole lot holding this thing into the car. Just the bolt for the fork right here, 17 millimeter. The bolt back there for the subframe where it connects to the arm, 17 millimeter once again, that's where I use the wobble socket. And then up under the car, see if you can see that. There's these three bolts, 19 millimeter, that are holding the compliance bushing into the car. These bolts are as subframe bolts as well. So it's very important that you make sure that this thing is torqued correctly. I'm gonna have a torque spec once I put this thing back together. The subframe's not gonna lower when you remove these bolts. There's a couple more subframe bolts that'll hold the thing in, so don't worry about that. You start off by removing this 17 millimeter bolt. I like to put a zip tie through the fork keep the axle from falling out. So let's get started with that. Now that this bolt's out, you can push the control arm down and I'm going to remove this 17 millimeter bolt that connects it to the subframe way up here. Now that this bolt's out, you can basically just push the control arm all the way down like this. I'm gonna run a zip tie between these two holes just to keep the axle from falling. And then I'm gonna rip out these 19 millimeter bolts holding the compliance bushing in. Here's how the lower control arm looks removed from the front of the vehicle. The orientation of which bolt goes where is very important. This longest bolt goes on the outside of the vehicle in the front. The shortest bolt goes on the outside in the back here. And then this medium length bolt goes on the inside. This bolt is a subframe bolt as well as a control arm bolt. Very important you make sure that all three of these bolts are torqued correctly, but this is the most important one because it actually locates the subframe into the vehicle. We're gonna take this guy over the bench and separate the arm on these two bolts right here. We're gonna be replacing this whole front section as well as this rear compliance bushing. So I've got the control arm on the bench here. This is going to be the replacement for the front half. This is a Skunk 2 control arm, steel construction with rubber bushings. I would highly recommend only buying steel control arms for your Hondas. A lot of the aluminum ones have a sleeve that goes right here that is made out of steel and it'll come loose from the control arm. That's very dangerous. Don't buy those unless they're PCI. The PCI stuff's great, but I would stay away from the cheaper aluminum lower control arms for these cars. For the compliance bushing, this is a K-tuned rubber unit. Just goes right in place the stock one. So let's get this thing apart. We're gonna remove these two 17 millimeter bolts. The front of the control arm will slide right off. Gonna throw that away. And then on the back, there's one 19 millimeter bolt. Keep in mind the orientation of the washer and then the new compliance bushing just slides right on. Pretty simple to get these arms switched over. Just blasted these off with the impact gun. I'm gonna leave them loose-ish, put it in the car. I'm gonna torque these ones to 61 foot-pounds. 
This rear one is 66 foot-pounds. It's pretty hard to get a torque wrench in there. You may need a torque adapter. I'll see what I can do. The reason you want to leave everything loose is, for this bushing especially, you got to torque all this stuff under load. These bushings, very important to do that as well. So I'm going to throw this back in the car, and I will get back to you once it's in the car and torqued. I have the control arm installed back in the vehicle. We're going to torque all the suspension components with the vehicle control arm at ride height. The safety inspector has made, his, made, made her way over here. She's helping me out today. So the torque spec for this fork bolt is 47 foot-pounds. These two bolts on the front are gonna be 60 foot-pounds. This bolt through the subframe is 47 foot-pounds. And then for the compliance bushing, three bolts holding it into the car are 65 foot-pounds and the rear nut is 65 foot-pounds as well. So I'm gonna get all these torqued and paint penned and then install the other side off camera and we should be finished with the lower control arms and we will move on to installing the new ball joints in the knuckle. So I just got both of the lower control arms with the new compliance bushings installed, torqued, paint penned, everything like that at ride height just because it is a rubber bushing. If I was using a poly bushing, I wouldn't need to do it at ride height. I could just do it wherever, but since these are just, this is just more of a street car, no poly bushings on this thing yet. I'm gonna head to work tomorrow with the knuckles in the back of the fit and press those ball joints in. Now would be a good time when you have the knuckles off the car to check the wheel bearings. The wheel bearings are good on this car, so I'm gonna reuse them. And then I will catch back with you tomorrow once I have the knuckles done. So I just made it to work with the knuckles. It's Monday now, I'm on my lunch break. Um, we're gonna get these ball joints out of the knuckle and we're gonna swap these guys in. I'm just gonna be using an ATD ball joint press set and a hammer and a socket to get this, the old ball joint out. It's a 26 millimeter socket. All you gotta do, is just set it right here so it covers over the stud and then just hit the thing out until it falls out the bottom. If the ball joints have been done once, there should be a snap ring right in here and you'll have to undo that, but it doesn't look like this one has been done ever, so you can just pound it out. So now that I got the ball joint pressed out or hammered out, I guess, I'm just gonna grab some scotch Bright, clean this out a little bit, wipe the grease off from the old ball joint, and then get the new one ready to be put in. If you look on the new ball joint, you just need to unclip this little thing, pull the boot off before you press it in, just so you don't rip the boot when you press it in. So once you get the boot off your ball joint, it has a little groove for a snap ring, just set it in the knuckle facing this way and then set your ball joint press up. I have this little adapter that's for specifically installing Honda ball joints. I got it with a set of Mevotech ball joints that I bought for my car a while back. I'm gonna put this right here. I'm gonna use this cup on the other side and then just thread the thing down to the 27 millimeter socket. It's gonna be really hard to film, so I will get back to you once it's installed. So you know you'll have finished installing the ball joint when you can see the snap ring groove all the way around. So the next step is to grab a snap ring, put it around the outside of the ball joint to keep it from coming out, and then slip your boot back over it and you're finished. So here's what it should look like when it's all completed. This clip can kind of be a pain in the ass to put back over, but this ball joint's done. I'm gonna finish the other side, load these guys up in the car, and I'll catch you back at home when I install the knuckles back on the car. So I just finished the day up at work, hit the gym, headed home. Now it's time to put this car back together. Got the two knuckles on the ground right here. I'm gonna throw the passenger side together first, and then I'm gonna film throwing the driver side together. Um, it's gonna be super simple. Just two ball joints, tie rod, and some brake stuff, and the axle nut, and we should be rolling on this thing. Probably gonna take it out for a test drive to work tomorrow and then drop it off to Matt, and we'll be all finished. I just got the passenger side knuckle all finished. Just need to torque the wheels and the axle nut. Got the driver's side over here. What we're gonna start off with is we're gonna hold the knuckle up put the axle through and then set it in the hole for the lower ball joint, get that threaded on, and then we're gonna attach the upper ball joint to the knuckle. Hopefully my hands won't be in the way too bad for this. Try my best here. So, unscrew the nut, the ball joint bottom, lift it up. axle through and just drop it on to the knuckle or drop the knuckle onto the lower control arm. Hand thread the bolt. Get the upper ball joint nut off. <clears throat> just 
stick it through and hand thread that guy down. And I usually take the nut off the, the tie rod, drop it on, hand thread that, and I get the axle nut started. Make sure everything's out of the way, like your brake line. And we just start tightening stuff down. Lower ball joint torque, 35. Same for all the rest of the ball joints, including the tie rod. I usually torque into about 35. I'm not sure exactly what the spec is, but you should be doing all right if you're doing them to 35. So I just got the upper ball joint, tie rod, and lower ball joint all torqued and paint penned. Ran the axle nut down with the impact gun. The torque on that is 140 foot pounds, but I'm gonna wait until I set the car on the ground to do that. Next is to get the caliper back on. You can either split it right here and put just the bracket on, or you can try and wiggle the whole thing on. I've had pretty bad luck just trying to put the whole thing on at once, so I'm going to split it apart and put just the bracket on first. Torque on the bolts for the bracket is 75 foot pounds. So I have both sides of the vehicle assembled in the front. Put the brake caliper back on. Be sure to take note of the routing of the brake line. It can get a little tricky when you have it apart. Next step, just gonna get this thing on the ground with the wheels on it and torque the axle nuts and the lug nuts and we should be all done. So I got the car out of the garage, lug nuts torqued, axle nuts torqued and staked. Turn the wheel a little bit. No more super scary noise, which is good. That was the whole goal of this little adventure, but I'm gonna take this thing around the block real quick, listen for any noises, make sure the alignment's decent at least, and I'll be ready to return it to Matt. Gonna thank you guys for watching this short little video. I know you guys like keeping up with the projects that I work on. I do a lot of car stuff in my free time and for work, so. There's always something to film. It just depends on whether I'm feeling like filming it or not. So hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully the video is informational. So if it was, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Maybe we'll be doing something to the Civic. I think we are. 